only got 24 minutes left, guys. I'm revamping our packaging. Is this sustainable? A funny thing happened when we started facing our fears. Our dreams came true. Now, we fly into the world's most dangerous storms as hurricane hunters. We own multiple businesses as entrepreneurs, and we have an abundance left over to share with others. We have just one lesson to share. Don't follow your passion. Follow your fears and conquer them with your passion. That's how you achieve big goals. So it is officially winter storm flying season for our Air Force unit, which means Davis has officially been gone for eight days, nine hours, and 37 minutes. But who's counting? Good morning. Um, Davis is officially gone flying winter storms. He actually takes off in a few hours here to go fly an atmospheric river off the Pacific coast. So it's just me chilling in this warehouse. And usually I have Bruce with me running around, but he's at the kennel because I also have to go to Mississippi and do some work for the Air Force unit before I come back here. So I'm just chilling. Um, hopefully we can get lots of work done today. But first, we gotta open some packages because we got we got a bunch of stuff. First off, what I'm opening up is some stuff we got from Vistaprint. This is all of my charcuterie brochures. So when I send somebody a charcuterie board, um, I include this in the box along with our furniture pamphlet and a board care kit card thing. Um, basically, I just break it down and tell people exactly what to buy to put on their charcuterie board. I say, if it is springtime, put this cheese, this meat, this fruit, and these crackers, um, just to give people a head start on actually using their charcuterie board. And then on the back, I give them a little motivation, like, hey, show us your beautiful creation and tag us on Instagram. So it's just a fun little thing to include in there. More perceived value. Um, actually, it's like actual value. It's real value. It tells you how to make a charcuterie board, but you know what I mean. More perceived value. Feel like you're getting more with every board. Uh, yeah, so we were running low. Just got three placements. So I went to take Bruce to the kennel today. And I don't know if anybody else's dog does this or like knows when they're going to the kennel, but there's a very specific road that we turn on and Bruce just knows that like where he's going and he gets super excited because he loves going to play. Anyways, today, before I stopped at the kennel, I, I got some coffee and uh, they gave Bruce this big pup cup filled with like whipped cream and it had a little milk bone sticking out of the side. It looked like a little dog latte. Anyway, so he got like all hyped up. He was so ready for the kennel. He was like, oh my gosh, like uncontrollable. I don't know. So it was a fun morning because he was so happy. But like, does anybody else's dog do that? Where they, they know where they're going before they even get there because they just know the route so well. I don't know, maybe that's just Bruce. He's a crazy man. Anyways, on to computer work. So when Davis is gone, I have a pretty long to-do list, which means I have to be really good at prioritizing what is most important and what needs to get done first, because there's no guarantee that that entire to-do list will actually get finished. So for this week, I chose my top priority to be our brand new packaging. I'm revamping our packaging. Like I'm redoing the entire inside lid. And I know that sounds crazy because we worked so hard to get all of our packaging exactly how we liked it, but we made one very critical change to our packaging that forced me to recreate the inside of it. Let me just show you. I'm gonna just show you, come on. This is the inside of our packaging right now. So if you were to order a board, this is what it would look like. However, the one change we have made is how we wrap these boards. You're probably used to seeing the wrapping like this. It goes in left to right, and then the sticker goes right here, and then that's how people open it, and ta-da, your personalized board. Not anymore. You may have seen this in a previous video, but Davis came up with a really cool way to wrap these boards. And at first I was hesitant, because I'm like, we've already perfected this. We can do this eight million times and quickly, and we're used to it. However, his way was actually faster. Don't tell him I said that. He's gonna get all prideful, but he was right. So instead of me just explaining to you the new way that we wrap our boards, well, let me just show you, because I have one to fulfill right now anyways. So 
So here's what a fully assembled box currently looks like. And when we set the board in there and people open it and unwrap it, they'll pull the paper to the left and to the right. And then we wanted this really pretty layout for people to be able to take a picture and share on social media or text a picture to their friends and family and say, hey, look how cool this board looks. So we get this whole layout. You see the be together, which is kind of like our, our slogan for Samara Table Company. And then you see all of our social media stuff here in the corner. And when they share the picture, all of that is getting shared with other people too. And it was just very visually pleasing. However, that only works when there is nothing in the way of these words. But watch this. So let's open this just like a customer would. So we're gonna go like this. Ooh, lift here. Pretty self-explanatory. Ta-da, ta-da. So what you'll notice is different is it looks more like a present or an envelope. We did that on purpose. We wanted it to look more present-y. Davis randomly just had this idea a couple of weeks ago. He's like, you know what? What if we tried wrapping it like this? And I thought it was gonna be complicated and take kind of a while, but it's actually faster because we used to pull paper from this roll roll it up really tiny and then cut it to the width of the board and then wrap it from left to right. That actually takes longer than this. When I do this, all I have to do is pull a set length of paper. I don't have to do any cutting. It's just wrapping uh, on my own here and placing a sticker. So all that sounds great, right? Why do you need new packaging? Doesn't that look fantastic? Wait for it. Let's unpackage this or unwrap it rather, just like a customer would. Oh, this is great, it's Christmas morning. They just opened a brand new package. It feels like a present and it's wonderful. Look where this paper goes. What picture are they now gonna post on social media? It's gonna be something like this. Now I will admit that still looks pretty, but where's the be together? It's hidden and all of our social media contact info is hidden by this paper. So that's what we had to fix. Cause let's be honest, these boxes are not that cheap and we want them to do some good advertising for us. We want them to advertise our social media handles. We want people to know what our slogan is so they, they can find us on Instagram and better understand what our business does and how we operate. So why am I gonna spend like, gosh, seven or eight dollars per box just to have all of my advertising covered up? I don't know, I wouldn't do it and I won't do it. So that's why we're redesigning. And I know you probably have 8 million questions about where we get our boards. We literally just go on Google, type in custom printed mailer boxes and pick one that works best. We've tried a few, they're literally all the same. I think they might all come from the same factories overseas. Um, so there's no difference. And yes, they really are that expensive. They are a bit pricey, um, but a lot of our business rides on the customer experience. So we are willing to factor it in to our overall product price. So what do the boxes look like now? That is a wonderful question. I'd love to show you. All right, this is what the boxes look like now. So basically we just moved all the text higher up on the box so that when that paper reaches like halfway through the, the, the lid, you can still see all of our info at the top and it's no longer blocked. And I may or may not have just ordered 400. 400. Another great perk of the way we fold this paper now is that our little inserts right here in our fulfillment station fit so much better. Look at, there's like a designated spot for them now. They go right in this little fold. No more sliding all around the box, no more falling out and getting shoved down here, just sitting right here in this nice little fold. So we get a lot of questions about how we chose our business name, Samara Table Company. People wanna know how long we took to choose the name. Does it have any special meaning? And to be honest with you, we were operating as a, as a successful business before we ever chose the name Samara Table Company. We were just selling things as Jenny and Davis, which told us that a business name isn't the most critical thing in the world. Getting started is. But if you're having a little bit of trouble picking a business name, here's a quick tip for you. Go on Google Maps, find where you live, and find a lake or a park near you, choose that name and end it with what you do. Salt Lake builds, Salt Lake woodworks. Then everybody in your community knows where you are and knows what you do. 
And that's a tip directly from our brand new program, My Basement Business, which takes really talented makers like yourself and transforms you into savvy business owners who are making a profit on what they do. So head to mybasementbusiness.com and use discount code LOYALTY so that you can get 25% off because we want all of our loyal subscribers and followers to get it cheaper than everybody else. See you in there. So when I say that it was a crazy weekend, it was a crazy weekend. Not only was I trying to get some Air Force training done, I was having to still post content, constantly answering the business phone, I had a super long night flight, and then on top of it all, I had a board fulfillment deadline looming over me as I drove the seven and a half hours back home to Houston. Hello, my last flight landed at like midnight last night slash this morning. Went to bed, got some sleep, drove back to Houston this morning, just got in this evening. Who now I have some boards to fulfill and get to the UPS store within the next hour before the truck comes and picks everything up. So let's do this, shall we? <laughs> I've only got 24 minutes left, guys. I have to get to UPS in 24 minutes. Can I do it? All right, guys, so we made it, but we are cutting it very, very close. Um, I'll see you when I get back from the UPS store. So you might be asking yourself the same question that I was asking myself a few days ago after watching all of this craziness. Davis being gone doing his Air Force job, me being gone doing my Air Force job, getting a ton of orders, having to keep up with that while we're gone, driving back and forth from Mississippi, trying to catch the UPS store before it closes. In, in, in all that, you might be asking yourself, is this sustainable? Is the way we're doing this, is this sustainable? Um, and the answer right now is no, it's not. It's just not. I know like personally for me, usually when I'm going this hard without a break, when I'm not sleeping, when I'm driving this much across the country, I get sick. I just, that's what happens. I get tired and I get sick and I can just feel that if I was to go another day or two at this pace, I would definitely get sick. And then I would definitely be out from work because I couldn't come in. I wouldn't want to get anybody else sick. And then I for sure couldn't get any work done. And that's worse than just taking time off, taking care of myself, taking a break and not getting sick in the first place. We've done a lot of videos like this in the past talking about burnout and how to avoid it if you're advanced enough or you've just made enough mistakes with it in the past, predicting it and avoiding it all together. But the fact that this pace and how we're doing things right now isn't sustainable is okay. Between the business, the YouTube channel, our Air Force jobs, the fact that it's not sustainable is okay. It just means that we have to change how we're operating. We're growing at such a rate that we can't keep doing things the way that we've always been doing them. So we just have to sit down and start thinking about how do we change this? How do we make this pace sustainable? And the solution that I came to last week, I've been thinking about it for a while, with all the leads I constantly have in the water and the social media marketing and the fulfillment and mailing out free boards and having to keep in touch with people and the checklist and all of it is just so much right now with all we have going on. Finally put my foot down, I'm gonna go for it. I am officially going to put together a sales team. Ask me how I do it, I just stick to the play. 